Hi, I've heard that you like random videos, so how about we talk about non-24 hour sleep-wake disorder. So first of all, what the hell is this? Well, it's pretty well documented on wiki, and basically it means that your day does not have 24 hours. In most cases it's like 25 hours, or it can be much wilder than that. And the reason I'm talking about this is because I have a case to study, which is myself. Yay! Okay, so let's jump to the causes. And there are not many causes listed, because as far as I understand this is not very well understood problem in itself. There is not much research and all research is quite recent. So, number one, head injury. I mean... I was child, I had a lot of head injuries. Number two, large pituitary adenoma that involved optic chiasma. What? Don't think so. Then there's sensitivity to bright light, which is more of a symptom than a cause, but I am very sensitive to bright light. Like if I am outside in the summer sunny day, I am not able to look at bright objects. And especially if I am in the city, I am not able to look even at concrete or asphalt. It's very, very, very bad. It's hard to describe, really. Oh my god, the informations in this article are really, really scattered. Anyway, treatment. So, there is the thing, uh, Stasimilaton, which, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Entrainment occurred in 20% of patients receive the drug compared with 3% receiving placebo. Ah, so it's like... Nope, 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 okay. Uh, and there are better results with melatonin supplementation. Okay, and no studies comparing these two. So alternative is melatonin, you basically take some before bedtime and they say that this may not help with daytime sleepiness, but I mean... Uh, I, no, I don't I don't understand how. So if you jump to introduction, they say most people with this disorder find that it severely impairs the ability to function in school. I can imagine that, then blah blah blah. Attempts to keep conventional hours by people with the disorder generally result in insomnia. Yes, I can uh, confirm that. And excessive sleepiness to the point of falling into microsleeps. And yes, very much so. So if they say both melatonin administration and light therapy work by shifting circadian rhythms according to phase response curve. So if that is the case, then how does it not resolve daytime sleepiness? Like, if that is the symptom of this disorder. That doesn't make sense. Okay, and finally the dosage is trial and error, which is, I guess, expected. The first report and description of the case of non-24, a man living on 26 hour days, who happened to be sighted, was a man with too long a day, in November 1970, which is very, very interesting. Now before I look at my data, I want to talk about some things that may have effect on this case. So first thing I can remember when I was about 3 or 4 years old, I'm not sure, obviously. This was in the kindergarten and they put us to sleep at afternoon. I'm not sure if this is normal with kids, I, I, I guess it is. But I was never able to sleep so they had to isolate me so I don't disturb other kids. So in their infinite wisdom they put me into other room but the room had no door and in fact it had a giant arc that I could see all the other kids sleeping while I was playing with Legos. Sad. Later when I was visiting elementary school I was playing outside until quite late in the evening. I mean, I was looking at the sky with telescope, so there's that, but still. I remember that my time to return home was basically when all lights in the house were turned off because I was afraid of the dark, not because I had to return. I would otherwise probably stay quite a long time. A few years later I have privatized a room in the basement and I often stayed there all night because I was playing with electronics and stuff. Up until this point I don't quite remember having any trouble waking up in the morning. But here comes middle school or high school for you Americans. 
This time I moved from very tiny village to, well, tiny city. Now from ages of 14 to 15 I turned into completely night creature. Well, not sure if there was any day when I returned to home earlier than 1 in the morning. If I wasn't in the city looking for girls to pick up, you would usually find me completely obliterated in the forest, where with group of friends when it was completely pitch black and without any lights, step away from footpath and walk into the random direction. Usually we were completely obliterated, so even if it was pitch black, we did see things. At this point I can remember that it was almost impossible to wake me up in the morning. Luckily I was able to, if not sleep, then at least rest during lessons. I mean, it was complete anarchy there. Also during this time I was experimenting with some occultism, if you would classify it as such. Basically a lucid dreaming and out of body experience. Now when I say experimenting, I mean it, because my approach was a little bit scientific and mindset wasn't really great to do such things, so after mild success the result was that I almost completely stopped having dreams, which is weird. So next I went to university and things got so much out of control that I had to seek quote unquote medical help. So I went to a psychiatrist or psychologist or whatever, told him my life story basically and he told me, do know. So then my personal doctor, or how is it called, prescribed me some hypnotics, still nox in particular. So I started taking it and it worked for two days, then it didn't work for four days and then it caused hallucinations. So I was like, what the fuck and stopped taking it. So at this point I was like, fuck the shit, because A, I am not an academic, so I couldn't make myself to like, attend lectures and pass tests. So I've got my first job and I had no trouble sleeping or waking up whatsoever. Now the thing is that this job was with 12 hour shifts, so it was like I was awake for 24 hours and then slept for 12 hours and this is how it worked out, perfectly. Now this was in completely different country and I had no money, so I basically shared room with like three other people, so this took me like six months to really re realize that this is not great, so I left. So then I returned home and I would like to think that I lived from money that I have saved, but I am not sure. In any case, there were no job opportunities there, so I once again returned to another country and... This time I was a bit more determined, but the situation was the same. Basically I worked in the factory with 12 hour shifts and all basically as previous job, so I was completely fine. Then after I moved like 4 times, so I don't have to share a room with another 5 people, basically I was looking for cheaper and cheaper apartments, I realized that this will not work forever and I will have to find better job. So after working as a technician in the factory, I got a job as a mechanical engineer. And unlike the working factory, this was a office job, so I wasn't able to take advantage of the shift system. So quite soon I started to notice that I'm not really able to wake up at consistent times. I was able to handle this for some time, but over a few years this got so much worse that I arrived at work at like anywhere from 3 to 12 am. So this was quite problematic because you have to do like meetings with customers and things like that. So I often stayed awake for like 36 hours if needed. Now obviously this wasn't sustainable for me and there were some other problems so I decided to quit this job and find something that I can do from home. So now even though not being able to wake up in the morning is not a problem, I still tried to do anything I can to resolve this. Even though it's not necessary for my work, I would still like to do things that normal people do during daytime, so like shopping and stuff like that. So I kept trying for like a year or two, I don't know, I tried to quit smoking, smoke more, eat better, eat worse, I tried to exercise, I tried to not exercise at all, I tried absolutely anything I really think I can. Well, mainly things that I would imagine to have effect on this problem. And of course nothing did have any effect. So finally I have decided to not even try to wake up at any specific time and let my body do what it wants to do basically. This allowed me to observe myself from a distance, quote unquote, and I was quite confused first. At first it looked like there is no pattern at all, but then I realized that 
I'm actually shifting my wake up time about few hours a day. So now I have some clues and I know what to look for. I've decided to lock time when I go to sleep and when I wake up. So I did this for about 18 months and this is because I want to have some solid data so I can see if something has an effect or it's just a generic glitch. So again I did some tests, basically the same thing as before and look for effects on me and I did not see any result. Quite funny thing is that even though I have never read any study or never knew about this problem before, I realized that I quite like to live in dark environments and this could have an effect on me, so I tried to give myself a light therapy with natural sunlight during summer and this had no effect, of course. But now that I read about this issue, I was quite amused that this is actual subject of research. Now I have tried to use alarm clock, obviously, and what happens is quite interesting. So at first it works as you would expect, it wakes you up. Then due to the effect of this condition, you start to be absolutely decimated, and then, believe it or not, after like one or two months, my brain is able to completely filter out the sound of the alarm. And obviously I'm using some normal sound for alarm clock, not some bullshit that is supplied on smartphones these days. In particular, my alarm clock was Serbia strong. Okay, so this is the data that I have collected over a few months. And basically, this is number of days. So it's lot of days, but these are mine days. These are not normal 24 hour days. What I do basically, when I go to sleep, I will write this time here. So I will go to sleep at 22. Then when I wake up, I will write it here. Then this is converted to hours because this is hours, minutes. This is converted minutes to like decimal number. This is basically, this is eight hours, but there is like offset to normal days. Same here. Well, this is pretty much how, how long I was awake and then how long did I sleep. And this is the ratio of awake versus asleep. And this is just data for normal human. And here I marked that I already started quote unquote treatment. And yeah, that's about it. So again, as you can see, there's a lot of data. And finally, I have some graphs. So these three graphs are related. And this is, of course, no labels. So this is number of days, mine. And this is hours. And this red line is time that I am awake. And this green line is time that I am asleep. So I was basically interested to see if there is any pattern and to look at average and stuff like that, basically. So there are quite some extreme values. For example, here I was awake for 27 hours. And, and this blue line is ratio of these two numbers. So basically awake to asleep ratio, which for normal humans is around two. And for me is also around two. So very early on, my theory was that perhaps I am just lazy, but uh, no, not really. I mean, maybe, but not, not, not really. Okay, so here is another graph, and this is basically time when I wake up. Again, this is days, mine, not normal days, and this is time of the day. And here, so here I wake up at 4 a.m., and here at 10, 10.5 or 10.30 a.m., and this is 8.30 p.m., and so on and so on. And so here you can see that there is some sawtooth pattern and there is some relatively stable frequency. Here it got much, much worse than normally, which I could consider this line to be normal. I am quite used to it at this point, basically. But this was hell. And this was probably most happy period of last few years because I work at like normal time and I can do things that humans do. Now you can see some kinks in this graph, like this one, and you can see that they go in like opposite direction also, here and here. And now I'm not quite sure, but this could be weekends. Again, I cannot really say because these are mine days. So now obviously here, for example, if I go from zero to 24, I cannot go much higher than this because of the range. So I have to reset the graph and start from zero again. So when I reset, 
basically more than once in this period. This is no longer 15 normal days or 14 normal days. This is more like 16, 17 or 18 maybe even. So that's why I don't quite see weekends here. Okay, so here is next graph and this is basically graph that I started with originally. I did not have any of these. So originally what I had was only this blue line. This blue line is basically same as this uh, graph below it, this red, this red line. It's just, it doesn't reset to the zero, but it continues up and up and up. So, and also this red line is same graph as here, it's just smaller. So this is still 0 to 24 hour range and this is allowed to go free up. I was like, okay, I can see that it goes up, but I'm not sure if I can predict anything. So originally when I was like at this point, this did not look like straight line at all. So I put some approximation lines on there and tried to predict future and for example when I got here, it it went like it went like so. So I was like, yeah, I will be cured soon. Right? Right? No. Now when I was about here I was really excited because I really believed that I could be cured soon, but then this this jump happened and I was like, what the fuck? Then I really just observed because I was like, I don't understand. So when I got to like this point, this linear approximation looked like absolutely perfect fit for this thing. So then I realized that I probably have some inherent frequency in myself to which I am synchronized and not anything else really. So then I started to look at more patterns and... So for normal human you would see one straight line, none of this sawtooth pattern. And also this blue line would be identical to the one that would be red, basically. But because I... my daytime or my awake time is shifting, constantly. This means that by this point it is about 776 hours in the... not in the future really, it's like later. Now when you divide this by 24 you will get about 30, which is 30 days. So basically I lived 30 days less than normal human. Well, I hope you understand that, but anyway, let's go here. This graph is basically a difference of wake up time from day two to day one. Basically how much later or earlier did I wake up today in respect to yesterday. And so today I woke up three hours later than yesterday. So I don't really need this graph to know this number it is this number, it is 1.85 hours on average. So you can see this blue line is actual samples from the data and this red line is rolling average. Now this was a little bit surprising to me, but you can see some pattern here as well. For example this peak, this was a little bit stressful period and then it went down. So a stress does have an effect on this condition. Because, for example, this peak was another point when I was a little bit more stressed because of workload and stuff like that. So it caused this line to go up much quicker, which you can see here. And then here as well. Here I don't think so, maybe, possibly. And this one was also quite stressful period and it does have a effect on this. But even otherwise, if you look at the red line, the rolling average, you can see that there is some frequency. For example, here is peak, here is peak, here is peak. Maybe here, here is peak, here is peak, here is peak. And so I'm not quite sure what exactly is this caused by. Again, maybe it's weekends. Now, interesting thing is that after this quite stressful period, these peaks do not look like they looked before. But again, this is... This is rel relatively recent data and I think that they will look again like this after some time. Well, hopefully not because I, I started the treatment, so... But yeah, um, I guess I will share this. I mean, if you want to use this for your research or something like that, I don't know. Speaking of research, if you have any suggestions or if you want to like contact me or anything, I guess feel free to ask in the comments or 
other means I don't buy it, at least not much. I looked at like two papers describing this phenomena and I was looking for some data from patients that would that I can compare with mine. This black line represents like time that person is awake, then this white basically is asleep. And so here you can see the this slope and also some irregularities. So I was able to basically kinda imagine that this is straight line and if you would turn this 90 degrees, it would basically look like this. Okay, so this study was not really aimed at looking at treatments, but rather just how the thing works. And not many people participated in the study. And there is not much data really, mainly this thing, then some statistics here, and some graphs here. Okay, there is a bit more data here, 10th August to 8th December, so yeah, it's more granular, but still not thing that I would like to see. And this is something that I was looking for, basically. There is a lot of data here. Yeah, you can see, for example, that here, person did try, but <laughs> it was so bad that he was probably having micro sleeves here. Which happens, if I, if I like sit down after work, then I will fall asleep easily. And then it sucks so much, then when I fall asleep, I wouldn't be able to sleep then afterwards. <laughs> so it will, it will fuck me up completely. Yeah, but here you can see that he tried, but then he... Woo! <laughs> Okay, so this study is a little bit different in that it is not treated by melatonin. Uh, uh -huh. And sh this, uh, is, this was a woman and she had some depressive symptoms. Melatonin related drug, vitamin B12 and phototherapy. But they say, ultimately her sleep-wake return was restored to 24 hours with low dose of valproic acid. Which I am not sure what it exactly is. Uh-huh, 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 okay, okay. Wow, talk about dedication. But it's interesting that the therapy had immediate effect. And pretty severe effect. This is impressive, really. Okay, so here it looks like this was a treatment of her, or attempted treatment. And oh boy, did they fed her. Oh yeah. Okay, so since now I woke up at around 5 a.m., I will be starting to take melatonin before bedtime. I would like my bedtime to be probably around 22 hours. I have 1 milligram tablets, around 200 pieces of them. So I will take this and I will log it somewhere here that I am start. So I have started and see how this goes. And, and after some time, about two weeks or one month, I will do a review of how this line looks and what happened basically. Now, I'm not sure if I am brave enough to stop taking melatonin, but I think like I should do that. I should really do that for two reasons, mainly for me to know if I am quote-unquote treated and to see how my body reacts to this treatment and it would be probably feasible after, after a few months, like six or maybe for after a year. We'll see, we'll see. Yeah, so... See you next time. Bye.